matter, just consider it, that we are subject to, that influence us, and that we find right now, to a greater than lesser extent, still act as guidelines for us. And what I'd like for you to specifically look at today is the judgment beliefs and patterns that we as humanity embrace and live as if it were our natural style of doing things. Right here, in this time and place, consider what you have grown up with that you have been made subject to that constantly influences you, especially when you avail yourself to that influence. Consider number one, television, yes! <laughs> like this, black and white, all kinds of fuzz, and now it's just <coughs> so technologically advanced, they almost seem to jump right out of the screen. But notice what they jump with. Uh -huh. So from movies, to sitcoms, to commercials, to sports, all of it is given to us to program us of how to be, who to be. And why to be, how to be, who to be. And it all comes down to we are constantly being influenced in ways of judgment. Judging ourselves, judging each other. Oh, and by the way, we just happen to have, fortunately, two mirrors. Would you please take a chance and look at yourself? <laughs> I know, that's scary. Take a chance, look at yourself right now. No, I mean it. Right now, look at yourself. Look at yourself. Go up there. That's right. Take the time out and do it quickly. Go up there. Go up there. Take a look at yourself. And then come right back. Yes, yes, yes. And I can tell by what you have come back with, what you experienced by looking at yourself in the mirror. How much judgment was involved in that? Interesting thing. See, when you look in the mirror, you get a chance to really get an idea of what your judgment belief patterns are about. And when you do that, consider, are these loving thoughts that you have toward yourself and creator? Because you know, every time you look in the mirror, who is there? behind that image that's causing that image to appear to be the way it is through all of the, the varieties of patterns that you have in between is creator, source itself. Because you see, an interesting consideration as you begin to look at this, begins to dawn upon you, and that is, you are creator experiencing itself as you, your source, experiencing yourself as you. So your beliefs, your attitudes, your judgments are all the filters that you're seeing through. But most of the time, we don't really see through them. We only see them. That's about as far as we get. Fascinating that Approximately 2,000 years ago, somebody who came gave to us some very interesting considerations. And one had to do with judgment. Because it was stated that he put, proposed it this way. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what measure you meet, so shall it be measured to you again. Now this seems to put it into different tenses, which is excellent, because you go from a present tense to a future tense, and you're considered there involved in a past tense. But all of it, if you look at it, you see we're talking about you have to have that energy up and running first as a projection that then releases itself and reveals itself as judgment. So whatever you're judging, with regard to somebody else, oh God, you look like hell today. You really don't take that person because you don't. You 
You see, that's the fact of the matter. But to use that as an illustration, that was my projection that reveals me automatically experiencing that set of vibrations. So if you want to change it, then you have to pay attention. And you see, you can change it because then you get into another realm altogether that begins to exit judgment. You begin to look at life and experience life as another part of you who kind of stand back, stands back and watches the observer. You begin to experiment with what observing really is all about. And you see, your heart knows the difference between judgment and observing. All you have to do is go to your heart. And if you find yourself in a place of judging, hmm, boy, I really like to look, you have it. You can go to your heart and your heart will say, hey, it's okay. Lighten up. Begin to generate love. If you can't generate love to what you are finding as the object <coughs> of your judgment, then just begin to generate love inside yourself and you'll still get the same effect up and running. Because you see, your heart does know the difference. Now all of us have these experiences all the time of finding ourselves in judgment. Some who seem to be exempt from this are a lot of people who have had near-death experiences. Because see, the nice thing about it near-death experience, even though it's kind of inconvenient. <laughs> Interrupting the natural flow and rhythm of your life. <laughs> Sometimes what happens is you have one of those life reviews. And in the life review, all of your filters are removed. And you begin to experience the experience as it actually happened. Not only what you said, but the effect of what you said had upon another. Then you begin to get a little better feel for the realization, geez, we really are connected. And geez, we really do affect one another. Generally speaking, if a person has this type of an experience, they'll refrain from judging. And the reason is, is because they'll see it as a, a no-brainer to let it go. Now, if you take that personally, that I'm in some way insinuating, or perhaps even going to the point of insult, take it any way you'd like. <laughs> it's okay. Because you see, all of those things are going to bring up different aspects of your own judgment about yourself that seem to be coming from me, but really are just a reflection of you, how you behold your own being. Okay. So if we move along with this, then we're also going to have maybe not so dramatic as a near-death experience, but we'll have life give us these other opportunities to have a look-see. And they will usually come about in very similar ways in that we have these really inconvenient things happen to us. I mean, just how inconsiderate of life <laughs> to dump on us in such ways that it does. But somewhere along the way, life also has in store for us an attending realization that when the right moment of our receptivity reveals itself, bing, there it is, and it shows itself as a blessing in disguise. A blessing in disguise. Now usually we think of that as however we think of it, until it happens to us. And then, we began to realize that life, source, creator, God is always aware of us and is there to help us in our awakening to who we truly are. I think of the countless numbers of blessings that have occurred to me, and some of them certainly were in disguise for when they first had, oh man, I was right there raising all kinds of cane about it. I was upset, I was blaming this person, I was blaming that person. As a matter of fact, I blamed all of them because it was her fault. <laughs> but then, you know what the difference is? Is that when I recognized it as a blessing in disguise, I didn't give you any credit at all. <laughs> okay, so you should... <laughs> You know, that seems to be like perhaps a next... In 
increase in appreciation <coughs> is looking at others who are involved in things and realizing they are a blessing, even if they're a pain. They're a blessing. So, then we come even further, <coughs> closer to the imminence of life, and that is learning to live in the now moment. Because you see, when we place ourselves in the now moment, and we begin to let go of judging, then we have this, this space that appears. And the space is full of opportunity. It's then for us to put into that space higher frequencies, higher rates of vibration, gratitude, appreciation, love, peace, harmony, accepting the fact that blessedness is a reality of life. And the more we put these into our life, we integrate them into it, the less negative experiences we have to actually mess with. And that's because they're not there as prevalent as they were because we're filling that space of now with positivity. I'm sure you've heard of synchronicities. Okay. Synchronicities, if you've noticed, and if you haven't, then you might want to use this as a frame of reference. Synchronicities occur more frequently with the absence of judgment. Hmm. Could it be the universe's way of saying that you're on the right path? Could it be the universe's way of saying you're connected? Could it be the universe's way of sending you a confirmation as to what you are generating? And I, you know, that's just another way of saying what you vibrate, you are going to have come back to you to show you what you are vibrating. You don't like what you get, then change what you're generating. Move away from judgment, and oh my goodness me, a big, big, big space opens up, full of promise. So, you know those veils that kept us in training to judgment? They begin to tear apart. They begin to actually disappear. And we begin to see the bigger picture. By golly gee, we are all connected. Here's just a finishing consideration for you. Imagine if we all treated each other as we would like to be treated, with respect and love and without judgment. <clears throat> How will the world be? Only you can find that out. And my encouragement is, go within your heart to get the true answer. It's there. Because it's you. Thank you. For more information about the Metaphysical Church of Enlightenment or the Rodin Foundation, please go to our website at www.rodin.org. If you have been inspired by the revelations shared in these podcasts, please donate to the Rodin Foundation's ongoing efforts to help others help themselves at www.rodin.org.